Well, when I first got in the country, there were eight elders coming in, all in the same district, and that was a big influx of, of elders. Uh, they lost like 10, but normally they don't get eight all at once. Um, and there are only maybe 40 to 60 missionaries in the whole mission. So most of my mission, I could, at least the first half for sure, we could name every elder in the whole mission by what city they were serving in, because there were only like 40 or 50 of us and six sisters, uh, which changed by the time that I'd left. Um, they had like lowered the age, and so when, when we were leaving, it was like six more coming in and like another scheduled 12, and they bumped up sisters from like six to like 16, and so the Adriatic, um, the Albania, the Toronto Albania mission, super low numbers. You knew everyone in the mission like very well, and then by the time I left, it was like Adriatic South, you know, bumping up to like 100, 150 elders in the mission. You you could go your whole mission without like meeting some of them. Uh, so it, was, it went from like a very close, tight-knit group to like a, one of the bigger missions because missions usually in my uh, experience have like 300, 400 elders. Like you can go your whole mission without meeting some of them. Um, the mission president that came in right before me was, so we were the first group that came in. We came in like two or three weeks after he got there. Um, and he, they asked him for a, I think it was a, a three-year plan and a five-year plan because he was mission president for three years. And so they said, make work out a plan on what you want to accomplish after, at the end of you serving as mission president. And then two years later, what do you want to see? Um, and at the time it was just a district and so it's only branches, and it was only um, from Skoder, it was the northernmost city, to Vlor, it was the southernmost city. Um, and they had missionaries only between those. There's another city that was farther south, uh, Saranda, that didn't have any missionaries. And then there were a couple of like um, harder to get to cities up north that they just didn't have enough missionaries for it. And so the first mission, the first mission conference I went to was like maybe two or three months after I got there, maybe even sooner than that. And the mission president pulled up uh, like a spreadsheet or a, a presentation. He was like, for my three year thing, I want to have it not be a district anymore. I want this mission to have a stake in it. And it was funny because all, all the old missionaries were used to the old mission president and kind of the status quo and they were less believing. I'd, I had no idea, so I couldn't say I was believing or not, but I, I didn't seem very likely because it had been a district since like 1990. And so for it to change from a district to a stake in these just these three years without having like built up to it seemed a little far-fetched. Um, but while I was, uh, let's see, they opened up Kosovo while I was in the MTC and so they had the first two elders go there, and then my trainer got sent up to Kosovo, which technically wasn't part of our mission yet. Um, so they were like technically outside the mission, but they were kind of like connecting uh, with people there. And then I got sent up there, so I was the fourth uh, into Kosovo as like a young missionary. And the first missionaries that were there were walking down the boulevard, and. Uh, they're the only member that we know of in the whole country was Arion Telly, and he yeah. stopped and he was like, missionaries, I've never seen missionaries in this whole country before. And, and he had been baptized uh, when he was younger in Albania, and then he had grown up, got married to a Kosovar woman, and lived in Kosovo, and the church literally like, wasn't there at the time. And so he, he's just, you know, he just kept on living the gospel and waited for the church to expand. And he didn't know about it until he saw missionaries on the boulevard. So that was super cool to have like uh, an, uh, a member already there. Because otherwise there were a couple of uh, like teachers that were Kosovar, but they had moved to America and it got baptized there and come back and they were doing teaching stuff. They weren't permanently back in Kosovo. But, um, and there was a, military base that had members on it. So they would meet as like a group, but um, Arion Telly kind of opened the way, and I think he's the branch president there now. Uh, he opened the way to like, be like, this is, this is an American church, just because Americans come, it's like a Kosovar, it's 
it's not in a particularly like a particular um, nation's church. It's just the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. And so um, him coming was super helpful because the coast of our people would, would realize that it wasn't just something that, it wasn't like a, a fad that was passing through. It was like something that was like good for coast of ours as well as Americans, which is cool. The basic history, every, every person on the street will tell you this in the first five minutes you talk to them. Um, they were um, part of the Ottoman Empire and they were conquered by the Ottoman, the Turks, um, for 500 years and then roughly. And then um, when the Ottoman Empire receded, the Emperor Hoxha um, took over and enacted a communist regime and destroyed like all the churches. Um, the whole country was deemed atheist. Um, there were two dialects, the northern dialect and the southern dialect, and he was from the south, and so that's why that's the, the primary like written language now. Um, and so like anyone born after like 1940, 1930 uh, wasn't allowed to have like grew up without religion, except for like occasionally there'd be like a grandma or a grandfather who had They'd like do Easter, but it was like super secret. Like if they got caught, they would go to prison for practicing any faith. And um, a lot of the churches and mosques and everything were demolished. So Emperor Hoxha fell out of power in uh, like 1990 or so. And the leaders of the country told everyone in the, in the, uh, like everyone in the country to invest their money into the economy so that they could get like a capitalist culture going. Um, and I think that was the first missionaries that got sent in uh, was during the 1990s. Like, and then 1992, or around there, they, all the leaders took all the money they invested and f fled the country. And so there were like tons of riots. They had to extract the missionaries until the riots could calm down. And then they went back, like, I think 1994 roughly, um, and I think they might have pulled in missionaries from Germany when they did that, because the first couple of missionaries, um, like the ones that were there, we had like a 20 year reunion, and they said they were in Germany, and they got pulled down to Albania, and they said, learn Albanian as fast as you can, and see how much you can teach. Um, so the, the normal, like anyone between like zero, like between 20 and 40, may or may not have grown up with any religion whatsoever. So approaching it, they don't really have like a, like if they're Muslim, it's usually because like their grandparents are Muslim, they don't really practice, or Christian, their grandparents are Christian. And so they approach the gospel in a way that most people can't do because they have been going to a church or have belonged to a church all their lives. And it's like, uh, I don't know, like when Facebook came along, that nothing had happened like Facebook before and so it was like an interesting thing to to look into and so a lot of times when you're teaching the gospel they like this the first time they're hearing it and it it in my opinion it makes it it helps to have a, like a lot greater effect on on people's hearts when they're hearing it for the first time and these and it's not something that they've heard over and over and over and so it's technically part of the European like area, but it's as far as I know, it's like one of the highest baptizing, just because the people are are so open about religion. They say the religion of Albania is Albania because they they just believe in like their country and anything more than that they don't they don't really have a great knowledge of. I didn't realize how lucky I was. I had a native trainer. Uh, he was the only native in the mission. And so when he talked to people, we would get lessons. So we'd street contact, which is, uh, is, I didn't realize how different it was until the first zone conference and people were asking like, oh, what are some good finding activities? And they are like, you're new, like what have you been doing? And they mentioned like, do you do English classes? And I was like, no, we go street contact for like two hours and then we fill up our day with, with people that we meet and teach lessons, the rest of the people. And normally it's like, street contact for like eight hours and get like maybe two lessons out of it. Um, one of the transfers we street contacted every day, like eight hours a day for a whole month and we got one lesson out of it, out of that whole time. So it, it kind of depends on luck, 
for our guests. The one person that we found was super, like, took us back to his family. We were able to, like, teach the whole family and stuff. So that was totally worth it. But it's hard to judge, like, oh, I'm going to get six lessons today or I'm going to get zero for a month. Like, you, you can't really tell. And the same way with tracking, like, I guess, I guess that's kind of the same as it is everywhere. I don't know. I only served in Albania. But um, finding activities where, like, English lessons, you could usually get a pretty good group of people in English lessons, especially if it's, like, a, like Skoda, my last area, was had a few, like, um, schools that were pretty close to where we met. And so um, the kids would just come after school and come to English class. The White Handbook says... Don't bring a backpack. Bring a backpack. <laughs> the the Jehovah's Witness missionaries in Albania all have shoulder bags, and so anytime you're wearing a shoulder bag, it's like instantly you're Jehovah's Witness. You're not LDS. Um, what about like a handbag? Or handbag is probably fine as well. Any you probably want your hands free. Um, the sidewalks are not uh, even, and so anything you're holding may or may not get thrown down as you fall because you catch your foot on something. Um, I had either two or three pairs. I think I had two pairs of, of shoes when I got into the mission. I destroyed both in six months. And then I got a pair of Echoes, and I still wear them today, and they're doing great. So Echoes is a solid brand if you want to invest in like solid shoes that you know you won't have to, have to replace after six months. Yeah, Echoes for sure, because that was like the biggest thing. Everything else you can pretty much get in Albania, uh, but good shoes, uh, decent clothing that is high, higher quality clothing uh, is easier to get here.